Hello, my name is Paul and I am proud to be a science nerd. I studied physics in college and graduate school. And later on, I worked as an astrophysicist at NASA. Now I teach astronomy and physics to college students. I'll be taking you on a journey to explore the connections between science and faith. Thank you for joining me. Today, I'd like to ask you a question. What are you scared of? The dark? Public speaking? Spiders? Clowns? Well, when I was a child, I was scared of one thing, that my life was a meaningless accident. I was afraid that God was not real. And when I was about 12, I had a nightmare. I was in the basement of our house and the floor just collapsed under me. My hands grasped for something to hold on to, but found nothing, and I fell into a great void. And I was still falling when I woke up. And I immediately knew that the dream was about God not being there. It was the most terrifying dream I've ever had. After I came back to the Christian faith in my mid-20s, one of my friends gave me a book. It argued that science disproves God. Now, I started reading it, but do you know what? By the third chapter, I got so scared that I put it down and didn't pick it back up for years. It was the same old childhood fear, this time brought to me at the hands of science. A number of prominent authors have built their entire careers on the idea that science shows that God is no more than a fairy tale. Now, I'm no longer afraid of that idea. One reason is that I now realize that science can't do everything. Science shapes the way I think. It prevents me from believing nonsense. But what does science say if we ask it? What is a human being? Science says a human being is a creature, you know, uh, an organism within an environment. It says a human being is a collection of about a million, billion, trillion atoms that's one followed by 27 zeros. About 62% of these atoms are oxygen. 24% are carbon. 12% are hydrogen. 1% are nitrogen. And then there's calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, and about 50 others too. Science also tells us that these atoms must be arranged in a very particular and complex way and Thanks to billions of years of evolution, here we are. Think about this. The atoms themselves are neither living nor conscious, but when they are arranged into a human being, both life and consciousness somehow emerge from them. This is weird and wonderful and completely, totally mind-blowing, but it's also limited. Have you ever stopped and looked hard at yourself in a mirror and asked yourself, who am I? What am I even doing here? Why am I alive today? How should I live? These questions strike powerfully at some point for nearly all people. And science, wonderful as it is, cannot address them in a morally satisfying way. But faith, which encompasses all science and all knowledge, can. To show this, let's ask Christianity the same question. What is a human being? Like science, Christianity says we are creatures, but it says something else too. It says we are creatures made in the image of God. Now, what does that mean? Made in the image of God. Some people say it means there's something special about us that sets us apart from other animals. This might be, you know, reason or creativity or the use of language. But whatever it is makes us kind of like God. Others say the image of God is relational. This means that we have a unique capacity to relate intimately with God and with each other. 
Still others say that we are like God because we have dominion over the earth and life on it, just as God has dominion over all creation and over all life. However you think about the image of God, it seems clear though that love has something to do with it. Scripture says that we were created out of love and for love. Love is why we are here and love is how we should live. And Jesus, who is called the image of God in the book of Colossians, is the love of God in human form. That's why he is so important. Now, you will not learn about this from science. The divine image is not a scientifically verifiable idea, and neither is love. You can do all kinds of experiments all day long, and you will not prove that the divine image and love even exist. But science also cannot contradict these things. It cannot show that they are not real. And we can ask ourselves, are we fantastically complex collections of atoms and nothing more? Or are we fantastically complex collections of atoms that somehow carry the divine image and have a deep capacity for love? Have we evolved in a vast and ancient cosmos in which we are an accident? Or have we evolved in a vast and ancient cosmos that is infused by a God of love in whom we live and move and have our being? Science alone cannot say. We must decide for ourselves what is true and live accordingly. In closing, I hope you come to see yourself and the cosmos we share as the most beautiful of miracles. I hope you never stop learning. I hope that you trust your own questions about God and about science. And most of all, I encourage you to learn and ask your questions in a spirit of trust and humility and openness and not of fear or anxiety. If you do this, you will soon discover that there's nothing, absolutely nothing to be afraid of. And that's because there is no fear in love. May God's perfect love, which drives out all fear, guide you on your journey through the cosmos.